Hello folks, I am back with another firearms review and I want to thank all my subscribers out there, especially those at Classic Pistol in Southampton, PA. Uh, that's where I work at. I'm on the range safety officer over there. So I want to thank all those people who have subscribed to me and uh, offer support to me. So um, a little bit ago, maybe earlier this month, I put out a poll. What would be my new birthday firearm. My birthday is in two weeks, but um, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I could not wait. So what I did was I got the firearm out early uh, because there were a lot of people looking at this firearm. And when I did the poll, a lot of you have picked uh, this particular firearm that I'm about to show. It At first it was in last place and then it moved up as I went daily. And I decided to go with the firearm that you, my subscribers or viewers, have picked. And without further ado, here it is. And this is it. I'm going to pull out some things here, and I'm going to get some things out of the way real quick. And just so YouTube knows, all firearms are unloaded. So you're going to see here, empty mag. The YouTube gods have been really crazy lately. So, yes, it is empty. And I'm going to show the other firearm as well. Magazine is out. And it is empty and it is safe. So, the magazines are going back in for aesthetics. So, here we go. And the firearm that I decided to pick is this one. It's going to be the Dan Wesson V-Bob. Now, originally, uh, the V-Bob came with, and I hope YouTube does not get upset because they like everything to be from the manual, uh, but it came with these grips right here, and I changed them out for these grips right here. I'll talk about that in a, in a few. So let me get to the specs. Of this. This, this is going to be the Dan Wesson uh, Valor V-Bob. V-Bob meaning that the bottom of the mainspring is kind of like chopped off or have a bob that's great for concealed carry. This is going to be in 45 ACP caliber. Uh, it's going to have a eight round capacity and the frame is going to be forged, uh, forged stainless steel. The slide is going to be bead, it's going to be a bead blasted stainless. Now, I'm going to let you know the, this firearm comes in three configurations. This is the bead blasted version, meaning that the slide is going to be stainless. They do have a two-tone version where the slide is uh, blued with the stainless bottom. And then they come with an all uh, blued version. So you have your pick of the bead blast, the two tone, or the all blued version. Uh, getting on this, we I've briefly mentioned about the um, G10 grips here. These are the original G uh, G10 grips. This is not a major modification, YouTube. This is something that's called a preference. And speaking of this, this these um, these grip panels here. These are a G10 material. And they are made from the company called VZ. I was thinking about getting um, lock grips, which are very popular, but I'd rather stay uniform with uh, with companies that the original manufacturer uses. So they use uh, VZ grips, and these are VZ grips. These are called the VZ Grip Operator 2s. So it gives you that little indentation for your thumb, great look. I wanted something to bring out the trigger a little bit or, or not make it look so plain with the black. Now, there's nothing wrong with these grips right here. Uh, it's just that I prefer, it didn't feel as secure for me as these grips do when I'm shooting. So I like these grips a little better. I do have these grips on my uh, Dan Wesson T, uh, TCP and they, they're fine. But for some reason, it didn't feel right with me on that. Uh, just to go um, give you more specs about it, it, the overall length is going to be 8 inches. The barrel length, this barrel here, is going to be 4.25 inches. And, of course, I like when the 
uh, barrel has that little indentation here for uh, for good lockup as the slide is coming back. So it's not it's like kind of like how HK uses an O ring, but there's like a thicker indentation for for uh, positive lockup. Uh, as you see, the gun is uh, a little dirty. I've been shooting it and. That goes to show you I do shoot my firearms. It's not just going to be sitting there looking pretty. As you see, there's a little dirt there, so excuse that. Uh, the overall height is going to be 5.5 inches. Uh, the weight is going to be 36.5 ounces. It does have a fixed trinium front sight uh, with illuminated vials. So this, uh, when you present this, this does... Uh, really ring out in the front so you can get good target acquisition with a blackened out serrated uh, rear U-notch sight, uh, sight uh, set up right here. Uh, also, I mentioned the U-notch. It does have the beaver tail safety with the what they call a memory bump or however you want to call that. It allows for a good purchase. Uh, one of the other things is that's really that I really like about this it is has a 25 lines per inch checkering on the fr on the front strap and on the main spring housing. Now a lot of uh, firearms make the mistake, like Kimber, they make that mistake where the main spring housing in the rear is usually uh, plastic or something of that nature. And the other problem they have is, especially on my uh, Aegis Elite. They'll have checkering in the front, and then they have these straight ser serrations down in the back, which doesn't make any sense. If you're going to have uh, checkering in the front, you should have it in the back, and that's what that does here, which allows for also great uh, a good purchase on the firearm. Another thing uh, I'm just going to uh, mention is there have been several upgrades uh, on this firearm. Uh, before I get to that, look at how this up here for your higher grip up here where you can really get a good good purchase on this um just going uh to this this is the my original valor has pretty much the same features but this uh valor was discontinued in 2018 and this is the newer version of the valors this also comes into and uh, comes into v-bob uh configuration as well. You gotta excuse me, I'm wrestling with a cold here. So there are some slight differences. As you can see, the trigger, this is what I wanted to bring out. You have this of uh, the trigger that's not skeletonized on here. And you you notice the trigger is curved. Now on on the newer uh Dan Wesson such as the TCPs and on the Valor series, you're gonna notice it's gonna have that K look right here. Also, that K look is also a, it makes it flat. It's a flat trigger. And with the improvements that they did to that, they made the trigger a lot smoother, a lot a lot better. One of the things that they do share is there's a little bit slight difference. I, I like this ledge right here for the uh, slide release, but they don't do it so much on this one. It seems like that... Uh, should be a little bit more pronounced for my taste I because when I don't use the slide release in a traditional sense like that, I always use the slide release like this. I do like how it, um, it doesn't cause me a problem, but I would like to have this type of slide release because it's a much bigger slide release uh, for a good purchase for my thumb to come down and, and to for the slide to go forward to rack another round in. So that's one of the things that I think they should have done to this. Maybe, maybe it's on its bigger brother because the, the bigger brother is, is the uh, newest version of that. Maybe it's on that one. Maybe this slide uh, size is only restricted to the V-Bops. I'm not sure. I have to do some research on that. But I do like the way this slide releases. One of the other differences is... Uh, what they call a figure eight sight or dot over dot sight. Now, if you notice this site here, this is going to be the Trigicon front site. And then it's it's in the back uh, with the square notch in the back with the serrated 
rear, if you could see that. You can see that's a serrated rear with a trinium here as well right here. Now, this is a set by Trigicon. Now, what they did on the newer versions of the Valor, they used the Ameriglow, which is a really, really glowing sight there. You can really see this really bright sight. And on during short shooting, I did see this sight very, very well. Outside of the differences on the site, I also noticed there was another difference. If you notice on this um, Valor here, this Valor here was uh, it has only a one-sided safety on here. So you see it's only it's right-handed friendly. But on the this particular newer version, you have dual uh, ambidextrous safeties, right? And they're wide enough where you can have a good thumb purchase on both whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Now, Sig Sauer makes 1911s. I like their 1911s, but however, what I think Sig had made a mistake on is their safeties. They, I realized they wanted to do a different styling cue or whatnot, but traditional is the way to go where you have uh, positive safeties where they where they lock into place, and you once you make a draw, you just let that safety down. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you get to be able to activate that safety, and that safety is uh, very positive. Uh, it does have the traditional bushing in the front here, so this is going to be like your uh, typical GI takedown. Uh, and a few other things is, uh, one of the things is, when you have the curve of back strap here, or the one thing I like like about the curved back strap, it helps you from not having so much printing when you're putting this uh, uh, concealed. But one of the things that I had to get used to is a lot of the a lot of these curved back strap firearms they come with a flat magazine uh, base plate, and I sometimes aggressively smack in these flat uh, base plates, and I pinch my hand with that. Well, that's a training issue. I just need to get over that or get like my, use my Wilson combat magazines like I normally would do. And speaking of uh, magazines, these are different magazines. Now, I don't know who made these magazines in the beginning. These are, these are uh, what Dan Wesson issued at that time. But on the newer ones, I've just heard recently about this company. This company is called Checkmate. And these oh, and these magazines are, let me see if I can get that clear so everybody can see it. These are called Checkmate magazines. And these magazines work flawless. They are flawless, eight round magazines, no problems. The biggest fear when you buy a 1911 is, are you going to get chintzy magazines? Example, Sorry, Kimber, I don't like your magazines. Your magazines from stock are not the greatest in the world. So what I do is I replace them immediately with these magazines, which are my Wilson Combat magazines. Uh, what I do, and I have run these magazines with this firearm, and it works perfectly. I, I, I almost make it a habit. It, immediately when I buy a 1911, I buy... Uh, Wilson uh, Combat Magazines. That's automatic for me. But these Checkmate magazines right here have really, really impressed me. Really impressed me a lot. I i don't like to usually mess with other magazine companies. I mean, Chip McCormick is good, but... Uh, and even the uh, Six Hour magazines are even better than the Kimber magazines, in my opinion. Uh, and like I said, even with this earlier model... I would like to use what I would say a magazine with a base plate. Now the newer version, the newer Valor like this one, it comes with a magwell. So the magwell helps with the magazine and the magazines are or have a base plate. So that is somewhat the difference with the newer Valors uh, with the Checkmate magazines with the base plate as opposed to with this particular firearm uh, without a base plate. Uh, now, like I said, they discontinued the Valor C, uh, series in 2018, um, right after I got this. I think I got this around 2017, 2018, 
And soon afterwards, they discontinued this. And I was really upset that he discontinued the Valor. And then next thing you know, someone said, oh, they're bringing back the Valor. And they brought it back in this configuration. And I would, I, I really have to say, this is a very good upgrade that, uh, that Dan Wesson has done. They really did a great job in upgrading this firearm. And this firearm came out two years after their discontinuation, which was, it was updated in 2020. So it's been out there for about a couple of years. And one of the uh, guys I watch on YouTube, besides uh, Beretta 9mm USA, uh, his name is uh, Bill Freightley. I think, uh, hopefully I pronounce his uh, name right, uh, Freightley. He's from Locked and Loaded 1. He has a podcast and his own YouTube channel. So you need to check it out. And he has a good video of this version, uh, the V-Bob version, as well as the full-size regular version, uh, where he tests both of these out. And I was occasionally made a little small chat uh, with him about this because I was looking for, when he made that video, that video was two years ago. And all of a sudden, I didn't get to find this particular firearm until two years later. So I've seen the um, the two tone version briefly at my at the shop I work at, but it was sold quickly, up obviously. So that's why I had to jump on this one. Now, how does it shoot? This shoots just as good as this one. But the trigger is so much better, in my opinion. You don't have to worry about excess flip. You All you're doing is concentrating on shooting. That sight picture is really good. With uh, good, Once you fire this firearm, it's right there, there on target. Uh, I just noticed something, uh, just to backtrack a little bit on this. Uh, looking at the serrations here, the earlier models did not have serrations on the top. I, I just I just noticed that the earlier models did not have these serrations on the top to knock down glare. So, sorry, I walked, I jumped out of line with that. I just happened to notice that. But when you're shooting both of these, they they're excellent firearms. But I could pick up this dot a lot quicker this front sight post here a lot quicker than this one and it shot very well and when you saw me send out the picture I'm going to show you a few targets and this target was roughly about 10 to 15 yards you probably seen me post the target up and as you see this is very accurate I got to do my part when I'm shooting this firearm no mistakes like this, no stupid mistakes like that. This is all called not holding the firearm right. And, and that's why you get mistakes like that. Uh, again, this was me testing rapid fire. Uh, my version of rapid fire is maybe a shot every, maybe two or three shots every five seconds. And again, as I sped up, it went awry a little bit right in here. And especially when you get shots to the left or the right, right, it, it or shots that go down. That's all my mistake right there. And let me show you my last shots here. And this is kind of me trying to do rapid fire at 15 yards. As I was shooting, I was shooting a, a large string of, uh, uh, of browns. And then I started dipping. That, again, is my fault. But I, I was trying to come up high, working it. So I had to do, let's say, a slight 6 o'clock hold for, for every distance I went in. So instead of coming straight across, I had to lower it just a tad just to stay in the center. If I w went down here in my sight picture, everything would be right down here. So... I don't want this video to be too long. I just want to thank everybody for picking out my birthday gun. If anybody wants to know my age, I'm 59. I got to figure out what I'm going to do for my 60th birthday. All right. With that said, happy shooting. Stay safe. Hashtag 2A.